Welcome to Talking Straight. I am Suresh Kochatal. The 2023 elections to the Karnataka Legislative Assembly saw the Congress party notch up an impressive 135 seats compared to the 66 that the Bharatiya Janata Party could come up with. That marks an increase of 55 seats for the Congress and 38 seats for the BJP's original tally of 104. That is, BJP lost its tally of 104 and ended up in a loss-making figure. And actually, to the loss of 50 seats, if one takes into account that the BJP has actually increased its tally in 2018 from the original 104 to 116 with the help of an election victories of the disqualified Congress and JDS legislators. The Karnataka Legislative Assembly, just go back into history, so we'll just take right back into history from here on. The Karnataka Legislative Assembly, formerly known as the Mysore Representative Assembly, was constituted in 1881 by Maharaja Chamaraj Wadiyar, the 10th, the first of its kind, the princely states of India. It formed the kingdom's sole unicameral legislator until when, in 1907, an upper house was carved out of it to form the Mysore Legislative Council resulting in the assembly's functioning as a lower house. On 16th of December 1949, Maharaja J. Chamara Radiyar dissolved the sitting representation and legislative assemblies. A constituent assembly that was constituted in 1947 became the provisional assembly of Mysore until the elections were held in 1952. On Wednesday, 18 June 1952 at 11 a.m., the first session of the newly formed Mysore Legislative Assembly was held at the old public office building conference hall, which is the present day High Court building in Bengaluru. The first assembly formed under the constitution had 99 elected members and one nominated member, making it a total of 100. With the formation of Andhra state in 1953, parts of Bellari district from the Madras state were added to the Mysore state and the strength of the assembly thereby increased by five members. After the reorganization of the state of Mysore came into being on 1st of November 1956, with four districts from the former Bombay state, three districts from the Hyderabad state, and a district and a taluk of the old Madras state of Kurk and the princely state of Mysore, the state was renamed as Karnataka in 1973. The first sitting of the new assembly was held on 19 December 1956 in the newly built Vidhan Sauda that you see today. The strength of the assembly, which was 208 in 1957, increased to 216 in 1967 and to the present 224 plus a nominated member in 1978. Karnataka had an illustrious line of chief ministers. The first assembly in June 1952, three of them, Kengal Hanumantaya, Kadidal Manjappa and S. Nijalingappa. The second assembly was constituted in April 1957 and saw two CMs. S. Nijalingappa and B. D. Jati, who later went on to become the Vice President of India. While the third assembly in March 1962 again saw two CMs, S. R. Kanti and S. Nijalingappa. The fourth assembly, which began its journey in 1967 of March, again saw Congress veteran S. Nijalingappa and the redoubtable Virendra Patel. Devraj Urs also made his entry for the first time in the fifth assembly and was the first Karnataka CM to last a full five year term. The 6th Assembly, which began in March 1978, on 8th of June till 8th of June 1983, saw again Chief Minister sharing the honours, that is Devraj Urs and R. Gundurao, whose son was recently elected to the Assembly again. The 7th Assembly in July 1983 lasted for just two years under the tutelage of the veteran, big-time politician Sri Ramakrishna Hegde. The 8th Assembly, which began in March 1985, saw Mr. Ramakrishna Hegde come back again and of course, he was later replaced by S.R. Bombay, who ruled the state from there on. The Ninth Assembly, which began in December 1989, so three CMs again. This is the bane of Karnataka, you know, CMs and CMs and CMs. That is Virendra Patil, S. Bangarappa and Virappa Moili. The Tenth Assembly saw Sri H.D. Devagoda, who later of course went on to become the Prime Minister, and Sri J.H. Patel split the honours. The Eleventh Assembly, which began in October 1999, saw Sri S. N. Krishna last for a full five-year term, the second Karnataka chief minister to do so. The 12th assembly, which began in March 2004, saw Dharam Singh of Congress, H. T. Kumar Swami of JDS, and Yadurappa of BJP ruling the state. Three different parties, three different chief ministers. This shows how unstable governments were in Karnataka for ages. The 13th assembly saw three CMs again, 
बी एस यद्यूरप डी वी सदानंद गौड़ा एंड जगदीश शेटा दिस टाइम ऑल फॉर बीजेपी द फोर्टीन असेंबली सॉ श्री सुद्धाराम आर टेकिंग ओवर द चीफ मिनिस्टर एंड लास्टिंग अगेन फॉर अ फुल टर्म ऑफ फाइव ईयर दिस दर्ड सी एम समथिंग वेरी यूनिक इन कर्नाटका पॉलिटिक्स द फिफ्टीन असेंबली सॉ वेरी शॉर्ट टेन ईयर ऑफ बी एस यद्यूरपा हुई क्विट बिफोर द वोट ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस ही वॉज फॉलोड बाई एच डी कुमार स्वामी हुए टू क्विट आफ्टर द कांग्रेस जे डी एस अलायंस कोलैप्सड बी एस यद्यूरपा केम बैक बट ही हेड टू क्विट because of corruption allegations and he was replaced by basuraj bommai this led the present 16th assembly and now again shri siddaramaiah assumes office for the second time it has to be seen whether shri siddaramaiah will complete his full second term or will as history goes in previous chief ministers his deputy dk shiv kumar takes his claim for the top post amidst the continuing tradition of unstable governments in karnataka this is the first part of our analysis of the karnataka elections what you will see in the subsequent editions will be detailed analysis including area wise and constituency deficiencies and gains by each party look at each party's position then on and you will understand how this present government was formed you will also understand what changed what intricacies changed the winning combination and the losing combinations thank you for watching jai hind Please subscribe to Nationalist Hub English channel for more interesting videos and don't forget to like and share this video Nationalist Hub it's a news revolution